Hi everyone, Mike here from Watch It Paint It, and in this video I'll be painting the new Dreadnought Brutalis from the Games Workshop box set Strike Force Agastus. Thank you very much to Games Workshop for sending an early copy of this to the channel. As you can see, I did make a small modification by adding a demon skull and some necklace chain to the shoulder armor of the right arm. I'm going to start off by priming the model in black and then spraying it with Vallejo Steel. You can skip this step and just spray the entire model with a silver primer. The reason I've chosen to use Vallejo Steel is because it creates a smoother finish than if I do use a spray primer. That being said, a silver primer is much faster and I have used it many times for my Necrons. Regardless of how you want to get the job done, for this particular paint job, you do want to start off with a silver base coat. I want to go for a forge blackened steel look, so in order to do that, I'm going to put on multiple thin layers of black contrast paint over this silver. I'm mixing black Templar contrast paint with an equal amount of contrast medium. I'm then going to apply this over all of the armor panels. The first layer of this is going to look like crap, but don't let that worry you. Successive layers of this paint are going to smooth out the imperfections that you're going to see when you put contrast paint over large armor panels. This won't be as perfect as airbrushing the contrast paint onto the armor, but I don't mind the weather look that's going to be created. I also want to leave some parts of the model left silver, so in the long run this will be just as quick and easy as airbrushing would be. I'm going to wait 20 to 30 minutes after applying the first layer before I apply the second layer. I don't want the contrast paint or the medium to reactivate the first layer and pull it off. Two layers of this black contrast paint mix should be enough to darken the panels and still see a bit of the metallic sheen underneath, though other areas may require three coats so that you have a uniform looking black color. Next I'm going to paint the shoulder plates and then do edge highlighting all over the entire dreadnought. I'm painting the shoulder slash chest armor with German grey, and I'm then going to follow that up with a very light dry brush all over the edges of the armor plating, the claws, and the guns with lead belcher. I find that using a flat dry brush to do your edge highlighting is much faster, neater, and more accurate than trying to do it with the side of a normal paintbrush. And on a model this size, it is very easy to get away with just dry brushing on your edge highlights, where the panels are so big and flat and the edges are very sharp. Next I'm going to paint some of the smaller details like the hoses and gears with a speed paint. I find speed paints are perfect for this kind of job, where the details are hard to reach and to highlight. Just use one coat of a speed paint and leave it. For some of the other cables and hoses, I'm going to use Mephiston Red mixed with a little bit of German Grey to desaturate it. I want this machine to look well used, so there won't be any bright colors on this guy. The insignia on the back is being painted with a mix of Balthazar Gold and Snakebite Leather Contrast Paint. I like mixing speed paints and contrast paints with metallics to make them flow better. Mixing water with metallic paints usually just creates a mess. Next I'm giving some attention to all the parts that are still silver. I'm dry brushing the symbol on the chest and the melted guns with plate mail from Army Painter. I'm then adding Null Noil Gloss to both of these features. If you don't have Null Noil Gloss, then I'd recommend using regular Null Noil and then dry brushing with a bright silver as your second step. I'm then going to add the Null Noil Gloss to all the other parts of the Dreadnought that were left silver. So basically everything that's underneath the armor plating. For the skull on the shoulder that I added, I'm going to first base coat it with Dryad Bark and then I'll follow that up with some dry brushing. I'll first do a dry brush all over with World War II German Beige and then some ivory on just the facial features. I've already done a video on how to paint hazard stripes with an airbrush and I'll link that at the end of the video. This time however I'm going to stipple on some hazard stripes using a piece of packing foam. I'm going to start off with a reddish brown such as Mornfang brown. This color is going all over the stripes from top to bottom. 
I'm not worried about full coverage from this paint. I want it to be a weathered look, so it's okay if the paint is thicker in some places and thinner in others, or even if I miss a couple patches completely. Now I'm switching to a yellow-orange color, Averland Sunset. And this time I'm going to stipple on the color from bottom to top, but I'm leaving the bottom 10% or so brown. Again, I'm not looking for full coverage. I want this paint to look a little patchy. I also want to focus more of it near the top so that the yellow color is more pronounced and saturated at the top of the armor panel. The final step is to use a really bright saturated yellow and I'm focusing this on just the top 50% of the armor panel. And there's no need to wait for this paint to dry, just go ahead and peel the tape off immediately. This is a much easier method than using an airbrush and I think I actually like the look of it better. It's a very easy way to make big flat armor panels look more interesting. And that's pretty much the whole model finished. All that's left now is a few finishing touches. Everything I'm doing next has already been done in a previous video and I'll link those at the end of this video. I sprayed the whole model with a gloss varnish, then I applied some decals, I'm adding some heat stains to the melted guns and some general weathering around the dreadnought. If you have any specific questions about something I've done on the Dreadnought, or if there's a video you'd like to see made about one of the methods I used, let me know in the comments. Also, thank you very much to all of our patrons on Patreon. We really appreciate your support. If you like this video, please subscribe, and thanks for watching.